Hey everybody, here at Cumberland Mountain State Park. As you can tell, it's a nice rainy day. I go over here for a minute. It's pretty today, I'll tell you that. Now what we're gonna be filming today is we're over here by the restaurant which is over there and we're at this little pavilion area they built and finalized somewhere mid 2017 got restrooms over there and we have this little museum right here that they built on the other side and we're gonna go in and film now as soon as we come in we have this this is Cumberland Mountain State Park at the top this old photo in the middle of these some of the men who helped originally develop this park don't know any of their names specifically, but it might tell us later on. The park, the Cumberland Homesteads, and the Civilian Conservation Corps. So it's uh, some of the men who helped uh, originally develop this place, the homestead area plus the park. I think it's a pretty good picture. Now this, uh, there are homesteads throughout a majority of the states, especially the Appalachian area, but Tennessee is one of the most popular areas to have um, documented their development. Now this right here is Cumberland Mountain Bathhouse. I believe uh, this is a picture of it right here. Um, that's originally what was standing where this pavilion area is that this museum is in. Now they tore that down, it was in really rough shape for quite a few years, and they finally just had to get rid of it and replace it. It was, it was good historically, but it was more of an eyesore than anything, so they had torn it down and rebuilt, and had built all this in its place to kind of document it and What not? Kind of do a memorial to it. I believe that's the restaurant right there, some other building. The original, it was the original lodge building and bathhouse as built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. I have this right here. It's another picture of it. And uh, that's the back deck of the bathhouse with its crab orchard sandstone deck. Now they still have that, uh, they still have this right here, this back deck. That's where we originally were. Um, when I showed you that back patio area with all the chairs and everything at first, that's where that was. Now, um, in this picture right here, that is the original bathhouse right there, and that's the original lodge. And it says this is the only photograph of the period that shows the front of the building that you are now in. And it is enlarged to the further, uh, further right. So obviously that's, we have acknowledged that already, but that's what that is. Is uh, this building right here, that's what that is. 
Now below here in this picture is the, the lodge on the site of the present restaurant is in the center of this aerial shot with the bathhouse to its right. So that's the lodge right there and the bathhouse over there. And of course the bathhouse back deck in this picture. It's pretty cool. The role of the CCC. The Civilian Conservation Corps was a depression area work recovery program of the federal government. The projects and work provided by the CCC stimulated economic recovery and renewed national infrastructure. A significant portion of the CCC projects served as, an, as instigators for the creation of state park systems. There were few state park systems prior to the work recovery programs. The National Park Service had come to realize that it could not take on everything of merit or provide all outdoor recreation. Something was badly needed between the national parks and a few local parks of the day. The CCC and the WPA, or Work, Works Progress Administration, provided the impetus for Tennessee State Park System and many others. The TVA was also particularly important to Tennessee State Parks. Now of course, for those of you who know any sort of Tennessee history, this is as it says right here, as you can read, is WW1, as they have it phrased hero, Alvin C. York commanded Civilian Conservation Corps, uh, CO 3464 at Cumberland Homesteads. Get a better shot of Alvin C. York right there. Obviously him in his uh, middle to older years. Here's a picture of bridge, uh, the bridge construction at Cumberland Mountain. Now that's a big stone bridge that's over there at the entrance of the park. And I'll get a shot of that that I'll include in this documentary. I'm going to, well actually it has a picture of it right here but I'll get a real shot of it later on. Um, let's look at that. Obviously they have all the water drained right there in the, this original picture when it was in development. Uh, the Cumberland Mountain State Park Bridge and Dam is the largest such structure built by the CCC in their projects across the United States. And obviously, like I just mentioned, uh, water is not yet backed up behind the dam. Well, let me get this in focus here. As you can tell, that is bone dry. And um, here's a picture of the pump house that the CCC built. Now, I've seen this before, but if I run across it here before I leave the park today, I'll get a shot of that and show it to you. And here's the, a picture of the original wooden bridge. Torn it down, done some work on it, so they had rebuilt it. And um, it's a uh, nice looking bridge now. So that's, that's part of the reason they made this museum was because they've had to replace many of the things that were historically already here. And they just want to commemorate everything. All right, here is a picture of some of the, of some of the original work that had been done. It says, Alvin C. York is facing you above from the foundation trench of the York Institute in the above photograph. So that'd be Alvin C. York right there facing us. And then uh, Sergeant Alvin C. York post-war. Get a close-up of that. And 
and then Alvin C. York in the CCC period. So, obviously, for those of you who don't know, Alvin C. York obviously had a um, quite a I guess some of the men who worked on the place sitting up here on the bridge looking down and you got this guy down here waving at them and of course that's a lodge house I'll get a shot of that before we head out the combination bridge and dam at Cumberland Mountains Bird Lake is the largest such project completed by the CCC of their projects across the country of course we already know that we read it earlier but they like to reinforce some of these things. Brag up it. Bragging rights, really. So it, uh, it has always provided a bold and aesthetic architectural statement for the park. And then here's some more pictures. Started to get a little water in there, still doing some of the embankment work. Even though it says right, um, it's obviously to the left of that statement. For those of you who don't know, this lake right here by the bridge was originally a swimming area, but they cut that out a few years ago, quite a few years ago, and you're not allowed to swim there anymore. But it's a good sitting area because, see where this wall is right here? It goes quite a bit down. And they have some stone benches where you, you can sit there, relax if you want to. And we have a lot of geese and ducks that come to the area, and it's a good, it's a good place to watch them. Now, before we go around and look at the rest of these, which there are quite a few, and I'm going to try to do a brief summary of each of them when we go to them, we're going to go to these cases first. Now, here's a civilian conservation corpse hat. And here's one of the original CCC original patches. Some cool little photos, which are basically the same as what we had seen before. There's a cool little CCC badge right there. There's a little menu recipe. They have this, what well, looks like a full one here, and then excerpts from excerpts from it. Got salmon something, and then Swedish meatballs, and then some pictures of the boat landing dock area. Even if I zoomed in on those, it'd be hard to really make them out. It says it was, uh, here's one of the work projects, courtesy of the Sergeant Alvin C. York State Historic Park. A 
a little pamphlet talking about the members, officers, and history. Pictures of them. And I'll get pictures of um, that and add them on to the end of this video or post them on Tumblr and share the link with that. Some more pictures, some little cartoons. Captain Payne. The Cumberland Mountain Lodge and Restaurant. There's people, an old photo of the people coming in and out of a restaurant. Not sure what year that is. Most of these um, photos in here do not have a date, even though this one right here is from 1965. The first restaurant was formed by an addition to the older Recreation Lodge building. The curved wooden section in this 1965 photograph extended towards the lake. Left kitchen staff. Of course we've acknowledged that. So I guess this one's from 1965 too. Not sure who these people are. But we can look that up and I can share some articles with this video also. Now, like I told you, of course, this used to be a swimming area, the area over by the bridge. Here's just some old photos of that. Looks like he's just seen a damned ghost. Cumberland Homesteads was the only substance homestead project planned for Tennessee. It was a resettlement project for the Great Depression recovery programs. The Great Depression was brought on by an array of economic issues, but in some areas, questionable agri agricultural land used for given environments was also a culprit. Many family farms in the hill country and plateau lands of Tennessee became untenable due to erosion. Farmers also began to lose their livelihood, if not their farms. Lumber workers, miners, and other industrial workers were joining the ranks of the, ranks of the unemployment. 
of course they made they made quite a few um, community buildings and stuff like that for the area they even have another um, they have another museum that when you go when you're at the entrance of the park there's two roads to get into the park there's one that goes across the main bridge the stone bridge in which we talked about earlier and then there's another way that goes through more of the homestead area and there's actually when you go on that other road there's actually a museum um, one of the original homestead houses has been made into a museum so you can go check that out and they also have a um, the homestead well tower which is pictured here it's pictured right here they uh, they had pumped all the water out of that I think in the 60s late 60s somewhere around there if I remember right because I actually went to that museum part of it quite a few times but they uh, they made that into a museum they have three different rooms well they have four rooms and you can go up to the top of the tower and one room is a uh, kind of like kind of like a thrift shop or not a thrift shop but a uh, souvenir shop you know they have old homestead styled recipe books and things like that in there um, so but the other three rooms they have actual um, artifacts from the homestead era um, that the families used old 30s 40s 50s items like old stoves fridges stuff like that which is actually pretty cool but let's look here real quick um, this picture here is of potential residents of the homesteads that worked on the project or no this picture is uh, sorry this is a um, picture of the first lady speaks at Cumberland Homestead and then I, I started reading this up here for this picture I don't know why but uh, potential residents of the homesteads that worked on the project received one-third in cash with the remaining two-thirds returned returned to the government as credit hours which was sweat equity to be credited to the eventual purchase of their homes and farms uh, the water tower and observation tower and the homestead offices like I said um, this used to be a water tower and uh, they have a spiral staircase that goes all the way around I believe the man who was working there when I went last time said 97 steps of course I've been up to the top quite a few times but it's 97 steps to the top you can go up in here this top part and you can look over uh, 127 north and then uh, you can look over from one side where they have Homestead Market, which is a gas station convenience store. And then you can look out from another angle and it'll have Homestead School. And it's, it's a pretty nice site. The cooperative um, workshop building right here. Um, above and below, quarrying the best areas for crab or stone used in the Cumberland Homesteads. And for those of you who have seen other videos that we've made, I've filmed at Black Mountain before, here in uh, near Crossville. Uh, Black Mountain is actually located in Crab Orchard, the Crab Orchard area. And here is the below, working on stone. Uh, the Crab Orchard Stone Quarry, 1939. I actually used to, I actually used to live in Crab Orchard, and I tell you what, I lived probably about no more than four or five miles um, well actually I think it was about two or three miles away from the stone quarry and I tell you what you heard like where they were blowing up rock and shit all the time like it literally like whenever they would like be breaking a rock, uh, part rock stone and uh, you know knocking some portions out I think they blew it up certain portions up a little bit and it would I mean that was probably about 10 years ago or so 10 almost 15 years ago when I lived there 
and they, it sounded like there were times it sounded like thunder going off. They would just like blow some of the rock out so they they could not. I mean, not in a way that was going to endanger anybody, but it was it was you know minor in a position to where it would you know knock it loose. You know, so obviously you know methods changed for that. But anyway, I don't know if they're uh, they still do it by that method or if they're even allowed to anymore. But it was. Uh, you know, it's kind of relaxing a little bit, you know? But anyway, we're going to go, uh... We have four more of these to go over. And then we're going to go over... They have another section over that way. And I actually have a little movie. I'll, like, play a little bit of it and let you know, like... It pretty much... It's a doc, kind of like a picture-by-picture -picture kind of documentary with a narration going over what... Pretty much where we're going over here. But, um... Anyway, let's look here. Cumberland Homesteads. It's a painted out graph, pretty much picture of what they originally wanted it to look like. Um, these are pictures of the homesteads that set settlers worked on. As you can see, obviously old crab orchard stone. Um, which is very popular stone. They uh, ship out across the nation this stone. It's very good stone for building, very popular throughout the states. Picture of a man building. Look at that old, uh, old Jeep over there, that old car. old trading post guys hanging out during its first year Cumberland Homesteads organized five cooperatives, a general store, which is the trading post, which we saw in the large picture above, a cannery, a medical association, a community church, and women's clubs. The trading post was financed by contributions from resident members and paid consumer dividends, and the cannery was operated cooperatively by resident members to preserve and provide garden produce for the members. It's a picture of a woman spinning for the Cumberland Homesteads Cooperative, working with yarn. Picture of a woman weaving. Man who's done some iron work. Not quite sure what it is he's made here, but and then here's a picture of an old woman carding. Now here's the staircase used to go down behind the bridge. Probably could have picked a better day for this because it's flooded, but we'll go down anyway. Now I'm going to have to speak up a little bit, but that right there is the lodge house it had mentioned in the museum. It's pretty cool. Now. I was going to show you a little bit of the action of the documentary they have in there. They have a TV set up and everything where they have a documentary, like I said, a picture by picture with narration of uh, the history of the homesteads. It was pretty much um, a summary of everything that they already have written out on the uh, posters and everything in there, but somebody else came in and they tested the TV out. 
and apparently the TV wasn't working today. I don't know why. I don't know if it has something to do with the weather or what, which I don't really see why it would because they have like a built-in, it's one of those TVs with like a built-in DVD player on the side. You just pop the DVD in on the side and it plays it, but I don't know what the deal was with that, but the TV was not working, so I couldn't show you an example of, you know, what it they have set up with it, but it's still a, uh, it's still pretty cool. It's, uh, um, whenever it comes to the area you live in, regardless if, uh, you agree with some of the history or not, or you like it or not, it's still interesting to know the, um, history of how, um, your area originally developed. So that's always something, uh, it's always something worth your time to check into. It's always good to have that knowledge. It's always good to learn about it, uh, whether you like it, certain aspects of it or not. It's not always relevant to what did happen. So it's just cool, something to learn about. And if you're uh, the kind of person who likes to make a documentary, just document it and share it with people. And, you know, help other people learn more about, you know, certain areas of the nation how it's uh, it developed as it is now or how it originally what what originally had influence on the way things are now